Okay, let's go. Okay, well, first, thank you for the interview. And uh, I wanted to first ask you, is it the first time you, you've been in Paris? No, God, no. We played here um, on Priest Feast a couple of years ago. And I believe we played here with me another time before that as well. Uh, but we, of course, played France many times over the years. But uh, I think this is my third time being in, actually being in Paris. And uh, do you have a favorite thing to do in Paris, a favorite place to, to go? I think just sightseeing everywhere. I mean, yesterday I went for a big walk around, saw the Eiffel Tower and all that. All the, so many cool things down in Paris, downtown stuff. So, yeah, it was just nice to walk around and see all the sights. It was good. Um, you joined the band in uh, 2004, and uh, the band has been, been around since 20 years. So I wanted to ask you, um, how, was it, how was it for you when you, you started to be in the band? Was it something that you thought was going to be, like, going to be a challenge? Or you, do you think, do you thought it's going to be okay, these guys are cool? Uh, well, it happened to me at the last minute. Like uh, six days before the band went on the road, I was asked to join the band. So that was very, like a big shock for me. So I didn't have time to really think about a whole lot except learning the songs that I didn't know and just going to rehearsals and doing all that kind of thing. So looking back now, I'm, I mean, I'm glad it happened that way at the last minute and said, I don't know, it was just a really cool uh, way that it went down for me. But uh, I mean, it's almost seven years later and uh, so I must be doing something right. It's, yeah. it's been a lot of fun, yeah. Um, um, is there any band you've seen recently live during the Dragon Tour that you've been blown away by uh, live or on CD? God, there's so many great bands out now. I mean, one band I really like, uh, of the extreme stuff, there's a band that we had on Gigantor 3 um, called Job for a Cowboy. They're real young kids, and, and they're really talented. For me, I think they're very talented. Uh, certainly the drummer, uh, John Rice, is an extremely talented drummer. And, uh, but they're all really good guys, and uh, they were fun to be on tour. We've had so many bands out with us on tour over the years since I've been in the band. That I, you know, Arch Enemy, of course, and just so many great bands. Opath and... You know, we're all friends and stuff now, but uh, there's, there's a ton of great uh, bands out there, and it's, uh, it's great for the metal scene to have uh, good bands. Um, you've been part of a volume with uh, your brother, yeah. and uh, you've decided to, uh, to close that chapter of your, of your life. And uh, when you, you, you talk, talked about stopped, stopping, uh, you, uh, you said that you, went to, you wanted to move forward, and I want, needed you to elaborate on that thought, what, what, means, what it means to you to, to move forward as a musician after uh, Ebolion. Well, the thing with Eidolon was we put out six records and none of them sold a lot of records, and that, that's disappointing, right? I mean, you, you put so much energy and, and uh, creative process to make a record and go through all this stuff, and then the record label says, no, we're not going to put you on tour. It's like, well, how are we supposed to sell records if you don't go on tour? So we're kind of stuck at home twiddling our thumbs, and it's like, all right, well, we'll do another record. Nope, you're not going to go on tour. So it's with that, we did, never did sell a lot of records, and, and that to me is very disappointing. So for me, like in the future, I, I wouldn't want to go back to that, not because I didn't like the music. I, I, loved, I loved that band, but to go back into obscurity, you know, after being in a very popular band like Megadeth, it, you know, I wouldn't do anything outside of Megadeth anyway, uh, but if day ever comes where we decide to pack it in or whatever, I wouldn't want to do the Eidolon stuff because I, it was never successful or never, never satisfied me in, in certain ways. So I would want to do something fresh and new. So, but, you know, again, I, I always liked the Eidolon stuff. And I ultimately got myself and Glenn into Megadeth. If it wasn't for Eidolon, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. So I'm thankful for that band. And uh, musically, is there anything you wanted to explore with your next project with your brother? Oh, I don't know. He's, you know, he's, Glenn's actually putting out a record uh, next Tuesday in uh, less than two weeks. And uh, he's real happy with that. It's, uh, it's an instrumental uh, rock fusion kind of record. And he's moving forward with that. And uh, he's really happy with uh, doing studio work. He has a full-blown studio at his house. So he's really happy doing that. And I'm real proud of him. And I think the record's amazing. So, uh, you know, again, like I said, with... With Megadeth, we're so busy all the time that when I'm at home or off the road or not recording, I don't want to play music. I just want to be with my family, and you know what I mean? So there's really no time for me to do anything, even if I wanted to. But uh, in terms of be doing stuff with Glenn, you never know in the future, way down the road and stuff, if, if this doesn't happen anymore, that's a whole different thing. But he's, he's real happy and, and uh, real content with what he's doing, so uh, I'm, I'm real proud and real happy for him. 
Um, you've mentioned Twenty Linear Terms, and uh, I wanted to ask you because you've re recorded with Megadeth two songs for a uh, video game, uh, Guitar Hero. And uh, did you try to play the, these songs uh, uh, on the game uh, after composing them? Oh, you mean Sudden Death? No, you know what? We we've went over it in rehearsals um, a while back, but we haven't played it live yet, obviously. With with the show that we're the tour we're on right now, we have 70 minutes, which is not a full usual Megadeth set because both of us and Slayer play 70 minutes. So it's it's already very difficult to pick all the songs that the fans want to hear and then play a couple of new songs from Endgame, which we're still promoting that record. So honestly, there's really not a lot of room for that right now. But I mean, who knows? We have obviously more tour plans coming up later this year, and uh, maybe we'll play it then. You know, we don't. I can't really say right now, but uh, we haven't played that song live yet. But did you try to play it on the game? On the, the game? Yeah. Oh my god, no. I suck at that stuff, man. I can I can't play any of that stuff. So, that's you know what? That's I should try to do that. I should try to do that, but I've not no, I've not done that yet. Okay. Uh, so you're not a big uh, video game fan, no, I, just, I suppose. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the game, that kind of stuff. I just suck at it. I okay. would rather play the real thing. I'd rather go play guitar or or play drums than me. I'm really bad at that kind of stuff, so I'll leave that to the professionals. Okay. And uh We are in your tour bus, but well, what do you do usually? What do you, what do you watch here? What do you? What kind of movie do you watch? What kind of game do you do? You, uh, do you play? And also, what kind of music do you listen to and tour? Uh, for music, I'll listen to anything. I like, you know, extreme metal stuff. I'll listen to '70s rock stuff. I mean, classical music, whatever, whatever is on my iPod. And, you know, I'll just put it on shuffle, and whatever comes out, I'll listen to it. Um, For other stuff, you know, it depends on the city. If we're like in Paris, obviously there's so much to do. Yesterday I went on a big walk and saw the Eiffel Tower and all the other things, uh, Notre Dame Church and all that stuff. And uh, But some other days I'll just stay in the hotel room and just relax because, you know, the gig is the most important thing. If, if I have to rest, if I'm feeling tired and I have a day off, I'll stay in my room because I don't want to be tired at the gig. You know, all these kids pay a lot of money to see a good show. So that's the most important thing for me is, is the show. That's why we're here, you know. Um, you've mentioned uh, being a fan of com of uh, Ghost Rider, and I wanted to ask a specific question about Ghost Rider. Did you read uh, some of the recent comics that have been put out uh, about Ghost Rider? No, I didn't know they had that. Okay, you're talking about Neil's book, right? Neil Perk from Rush. Um, no, no, I thought I thought the com I thought the comic book character. No, 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 no. Sorry. The go the Ghost Rider thing that I read was a book that was written by Neil Peart from Rush. Oh, okay. It's a, the whole story is about after his uh, his daughter died in an accident and his wife died. It's a whole so yeah, that's a whole different a whole different thing. I don't even know what the Ghost Rider comic is. <laughs> Sorry, complete misunderstanding. Because because so the, the Ghost Rider character kind of looks like the um, uh, the character for Megadeth, you know, with a head a, a skull as a head, you know. And uh, so the next question. You assume that that was what was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, about uh, it was a little bit of follow up. Uh, uh, Go ahead and ask uh, me. I can yeah. If you want. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that would be fine then. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, you know, Dave Mustaine did uh, an appearance on a cart on a cartoon uh, like uh, a couple of years ago. Like uh, was on uh, D Duck uh, Dodgers. Oh, Dodgers. Yeah. 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 And uh, is there another cartoon or, or TV show you would like to to be part of? I'd like to be on the Flintstones. Okay. You guys know what the Flintstones yeah, is sure. in France? Oh, that, to me, that's the best cartoon ever made. I mean, that's if I want to be on a cartoon, I want to be that or on Bugs Bunny or something like that. But uh, uh, what, it probably won't happen. But since you asked, yeah. No, what kind of character would you like to play in it? Just yourself or something? <laughs> no, I'd rather play myself. But just to be in a in a sketch with the Flintstones, I think that'd be pretty freaking funny. Okay. Yeah. Um, on your personal page, and I think there is going to be no misunderstanding about that. You mentioned the movie Halloween. Yeah. Uh, are you a fan of horror movies or John Carpenter? Yeah, it's my, it's my favorite favorite genre of movies. Uh, I mean, I love comedies and all kinds of different things, but uh, I'd rather watch a horror movie. That's okay. just what I've always loved. So, yeah. And uh, is there any all the horror movies you would recommend that you've seen recently? Of the old, I mean, you know, the classics, Omen, The Exorcist, Halloween, Shining. I mean, there's just, there's tons of them. I like a lot of the crappy B movies from the '80s that are not great movies, but they're just, you know, if they have a lot of good gore and stuff, I like a lot of that stuff. But you know, th that's kind of stuff. It depends. It's like anything. You know, some it's like music. Some people like this kind of music. Some people don't. So same thing with horror movies. You know, I like a lot of the stuff from the '70s and the '80s. I don't. Honestly, I don't like a whole lot of horror movies that have come out in recent years. Um, I don't think they're as good. The Rob Zombie stuff, when he recreated, when he did the Halloweens, I liked, I thought that was really good. And uh, there's some good filmmakers. 
but I think there was more an abundance of movies, uh, scary movies in the 70s and 80s, and so that to me, those to me are the classics because that's what I gravitate towards too. So yeah. Okay. And finally, uh, you did a song with a singer from like Nicole. And uh, I wanted to ask you if you had any plans to record another song with a, a metal singer, metal, metal female singer. I don't know. I mean, we we did it, and obviously having Christina do that, that was great. And uh, you know, we love her, and we love the love her band and stuff. And that was fun. It was something, a, a, a way to revisit a tout le monde, and uh, do it in a different way. And uh, obviously, the fans really dug that song and stuff. But uh, you know, I don't know. I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we'll do that something like that anytime soon. I think we're just gonna stick to what we do and and uh, you know, and just have the four of us on the record and and uh, see what we come up with. So touring with Slayer didn't motivate you to to do a collaboration with a Kerry King or something like that. You, you know, I mean, obviously that'd be a cool thing. You know, it's uh, again, you you never know what's gonna happen. I, I I hate to say no and then it happens, or I hate to say yes and it doesn't happen. I mean, we can. You know, the the Christina thing kind of happened. It was like all, you know, suddenly, you know, why don't we do this? Why don't we get Christina? And it's like, she's like, okay, sure. So you never know, but I, I don't think it would happen anytime soon. But obviously having Carrie to play on any song would be great. But, you know, you never know. Okay. You never know. Well, thank you very much for, for your time. You. And uh, I hope you're going to have a good show. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Have a good tour. All right, buddy. Okay, it's cool. Cool. Thank you very much.